Okay, looks like we're live. Just kind of zoned right on out there. Sorry about that, guys. I was just waiting for it to say I was live. All right, so welcome to the Friday uh, Friday night. Oh, boy, am I so tired. To the uh, second Bible reading, but this is just the reading uh, for uh, October 12th. Uh, today's reading, the Insight Scripture is going to be 2 Samuel 9, 1 through 10. And the verses are going to be Isaiah 39 and 40 and Colossians 4. And before we get into it, Father God, we just thank you for this beautiful day. The cool weather is awesome. I love this weather. And Father, as always, we're just continuing to keep our prayers lifted towards Israel and to folks that are innocent bystanders that are getting affected by this war that have nothing to do with this war. Father, I just ask you to continue to keep them safe and put a hedge of protection around them. Help them to find a way to, to get out of there. Amir Sarfati's in danger. His family's in danger. The actor in The Chosen that plays Simon Peter, Sahar Isaac, is in Capernaum. So I ask you to put protection around them as well. And all the people that are in harm's way that are not guilty of anything but just being Jewish or just being there Father I just ask that you protect them from the evil ones I know it's in your word and I know this day was coming we know this day was coming but still there's so many that don't know Jesus yet Father and I just pray that this is this is the eye opener this is what they needed to turn them around and let them realize that he is truly the Messiah that if if anyone had ministered to them the, the gospel at all, did it all connect the dots for them. As you bless the reading of your word tonight, Father, and as always, I ask for wisdom, uh, knowledge, discernment, and understanding so that we can have the tools and the, and, and the weapons, so to speak, that we need, Father, to share it with others while there's still time. And we pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, so 2 Samuel 9, 1 through 10, the insight scripture, it says, it's talking about David and Jonathan offer a glimpse of what a true friendship looks like. Though Jonathan was King Saul's son, he sought to protect David from the king's irrational anger and bitter hatred. Upon hearing news of Jonathan's death, David wrote of the pain, loss, and despair over the death of a dear friend. Yet even during his grief for Jonathan, he also grieved over Saul. In 2 Samuel 1.24, Saul had pursued David like a common criminal, but David still grieved the king's death. This is written by Bill Crowder. Let's see. In 2 Samuel 9.1-10, it says, David's kindness to... <laughs> I forgot to look up this word. Mephif... I don't... That person. I cannot say that name. And I am so insanely tired right now. Now David said, is there still anyone who is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And there was a servant of the house of Saul whose name was Ziba. So when they had called him to David, the king said to him, are you Ziba? He said, at your service. Let me get my other thing up here. And... Then the king said, is there not still someone of the house of Saul? Oh, uh, the house of Saul, to whom I may show the kindness of God. And Ziba said to the king, there is still a son of Jonathan who is lame in his feet. So the king said to him, where is he? And Ziba said to the king, indeed, he is in the house of Mekir, the son of Amiel in Lodabar. Then King David sent and brought him out of the house of Mekir, the son of Emmanuel from the Lodabar. Now when Mephibosheth, I guess, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, had come to David, he fell on his face and prostrated himself. Then David said, son of Saul, son of David, Jonathan. I'm not going to try to say that name. <laughs> I can't say it. And he answered, here's your servant. So David said to him, Do not fear, for I will surely show you kindness for Jonathan, your father's sake, and will restore you 
restore to you all the land of Saul, your grandfather, and you shall eat bread at my table continually. Then he bowed himself and said, What is your servant, that you should look upon such a dead dog as I? And the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said to him, I have given to your master's son all that belonged to Saul and to all his house. You therefore and your sons and your servants shall work the land for him, and you shall bring in the harvest that your master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, your master's son, shall eat bread at my table always. Now Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. Jeez. So the story is uh, the insight story is called Knowing and Loving. In the powerful article, Does My Son Know You? Sports writer Jonathan Jarks, I had to look that one up, wrote of his battle with terminal cancer oh, and his desire for others to care well for his wife and young son. The 34-year-old wrote the piece just six months prior to his death. Jarks, a believer in Jesus, whose father had died when he was a young adult, shared scriptures that speak of care for widows and orphans. In Exodus 22:22, it says, Do not take advantage of the widow or the fatherless. Isaiah 1:17 says, Learn to do right, seek justice, defend the oppressed, take up the cause of the fatherless, and plead the case of the widow. And James 1:27 says, Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless as this, to look after orphans and widows is the, in their distress, and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. And in words directed to his friends, he wrote, When I see you in heaven, there's only one thing I'm going to ask. Were you good to my son and my wife? Does my son know you? King David wondered if there was anyone still left of the house of Saul to whom he could show kindness for his dear friend Jonathan's sake. A son of Jonathan, my fifth, the, that person, who was lame in both feet, due to an accident, was brought to the king. David said to him, I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan, for, of your father, Jonathan. I will restore to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather, Saul, and you will always eat at my table. David showed loving care for Jonathan's son, and it's likely that in time the king truly got to know him. Jesus has called us to love others just as he loved us. John 13:34 A new command I give you love one another as I have loved you so you must love one another as he works in and through us let's truly get to know and love them well and this was written by Tom Felton How can you know others more deeply what will it look like for you to love them the way God loves you Heavenly Father help us to honor you by striving to truly know and love others. Amen. So picking up. Yes, I didn't want to stop reading last night because it was actually at a really good point. All right, so just to kind of recap. Let's see. Uh, I can't remember. Well, I'm sure we'll remember. Uh, Isaiah 38. Let's see. Let me back this up a page. <clears throat> and let's see. What was it? Um, yeah, here we go. So when we left off, because I remember saying, man, I don't even want to stop reading. I just want to keep going, which I could have. But, you know, that's kind of like jumping to the end of a book to see how it ends and then reading the book, which I've done that. I do that with videos all the time because I don't want to sit there and watch for them to clean the kitten's eyes and then give it a bath and then blow dry it. And then there's the, I just want to see if they have a mama cat that will take it in as an orphan and nurse it, you know, <laughs> I just, you know, I just skip to the end. Come on, let's just get there. Okay. So that's going to take an eternity to load. So we'll just go. The Babylonian envoys. At that time, Merodach, the son of 
the Laden king of Babylon sent letters and a present to Hezekiah, for he heard that he had been sick and had recovered. Yes, 15 years. And Hezekiah was pleased with them and showed them the house of his treasures, the silver and gold, the spices and precious ointment, and all his armory, all that was found among his treasures. There was nothing in his house or in all his dominion that Hezekiah did not show them. Then Isaiah the prophet went to King Hezekiah and said to him, What did these men say, and from where did they come to you? So Hezekiah said, They came to me from a far country, from Babylon. And he said, What have they seen in your house? So Hezekiah answered, They have seen all that is in my house. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not shown them. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord of hosts. Behold, the days are coming when all that is in your house and what your fathers have accounted, accumulated until this day shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, says the Lord. And they will take away some of your sons who will descend from you, whom you will beget. And they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. So Hezekiah said to Isaiah, The word of the Lord which you have spoken is good, for he said, At least there will be peace and truth in my days. Isaiah 40 God's people are comforted. Comfort, yes, comfort my people, says your God. Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare is ended, yes, Lord, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins the voice of one crying in the wilderness prepare the way of the lord make straight in the desert a highway for our god why that's what john the baptist said every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill brought low the crooked places shall be made straight and the rough places smooth the glory of the lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The voice said, Cry out. And he said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its loveliness is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, because the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our Lord stands forever. O Zion, you who bring good tidings, get up into the high mountain, O Jerusalem. You who bring good tidings, lift up your voice with strength. Lift it up, be not afraid. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God shall come with a strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and gently lead those who are with young, who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, measured heaven with a span, and calculated the dust of the earth in a measure, weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance, who has directed the spirit of the Lord, or as his counselor has taught him, With whom did he take counsel and who instructed him and taught him in the path of injustice, who taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding? Behold, the nations are as a drop in a bucket and are counted as a small dust on the scales. Look, he lifts up the isles as a very little thing, and Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor its beast sufficient for a burnt offering. All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted by him less than nothing and worthless. To whom, then, will you liken God, or what likeness will you compare to him? The workman molds an image, the goldsmith overspreads it with gold, and the silversmith casts silver chains. Whoever is too impoverished, make sure we're still recording, whoever is too impoverished, For such a contribution. What was that noise, James? 
Can you go check our cats? Chooses a tree that will not rot. Sound like it was out here. Well, it's hard to say. Sorry. He's sick. We're, we're just paranoid. Because we have some cats that will not, will not come in. So we're just like, wear ourselves to an early grave for them. Chooses a tree that will not rot because of our killer neighbor that likes to trap and kill our cats. He seeks for himself a skillful workman to prepare a carved image that will not totter. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. He brings the princes to nothing. He makes the judges of the earth useless. Scarcely shall they be planted. Scarcely shall they be sown. Scarcely shall their stock take root in the earth when he will also blow on them and they will wither and the whirlwind will take them away like stubble. To whom then will you liken me? Or to whom shall I be equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who has created these things, who brings out their host by number. He calls them all by name, by the greatness of his might and the strength of his power. No one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Jacob, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord. And my just claim is passed over by my God. And I remember this from when I read this before, reading through the Bible. And there is, there is, in my study Bible, it says something very, very important. I know this isn't the study part of the reading, but there's a reason why it says, O Jacob, O Israel, right here. And I want to share that with you really super quick. So let me go to Isaiah here. This is Isaiah 40, yeah. Uh, let's see. Isaiah 40. I have a grandson named Isaiah and I have a grandson named Jeremiah. Pretty cool. And when my daughter named the, you know, named them in that order, she had no idea that was the order that they came in the Bible. <laughs> Just happened that way. Happy accident. All right, I'm getting there. It would have been quicker if I put my stupid glasses on. I apologize. But this, I do remember this, though, and it is it is pretty cool. Uh, let me grab, speaking of glasses, let me grab them because I'm going to need them. Um, okay, we're almost done. So just take a minute here. No, uh, okay, well. I bought a new tinier wallet to put in my little tinier purse that my daughter gave me. Her sister had bought like a, oh gosh, a $600 coach purse. <laughs> yeah. And it came with a smaller little purse, the kind that, you know, the long strap goes over your shoulder and it's just like a hip bag. And Danielle that gave the little one to me. Uh, to use and my wallet that she had bought me a long time ago that I'm still using that's holding on by threads because I'll use it till it falls apart <laughs> it doesn't fit in there so anyway okay, I was here I'm sorry I was just like trying to like not have like weird sounds while I'm trying to dig in my purse <laughs> anyway so we're at Isaiah 40 verse 27 yeah, see, I've got it all highlighted and stuff. So what sayest you, O Jacob, and speakest, O Israel? Okay. Understanding at least somewhat of the greatness of God and then to think that we can hide things from him presents foolishness of the highest order. Okay. The Lord, okay. Why? Where is it? Now, I know I read something about that. Because it's like the Holy Spirit is, is doing this for a reason. There's a reason why sometimes he'll refer to him as Jacob and sometimes he'll refer to him as um, Israel. 
Now, let me find it. Give me just a second. Um, oh, yes. We're getting ready to get to my favorite verse. Um, okay, well, I can't find what I was referring to, and I'm sure I'll come to it through this reading in Isaiah because I know it's in here. I know it's in here because I remembered this because he kept because he'll do it more than once and and so eventually we'll get to that so we'll when we cross that bridge I'll, I'll point it out so my way is hidden from the Lord and my just claim is passed over by God by my God have you not known have you not heard the everlasting God the Lord the creator of the ends of the earth neither faints nor is weary his understanding is unsearchable here it is 29 through 31 other than Philippians 413 this is what I stand on he gives power to the weak and to those who have no might he increases strength even the youths shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings like eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint amen amen i love that i love that that verse 31 isaiah 40 31 is probably one of the one of the scriptures that i love that gives me encouragement every time other than philippians 4 13 i can do all things and every time i say that i can hear a mirror sarfati go say all things <laughs> I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Okay, so now we're the last scripture, Colossians 4, final greetings. Masters, give your bond servants what is just and fair, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. Christian graces, continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Meanwhile, praying also for us that God would open to us a door for the word to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in chains, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom toward those who are outside, redeeming the time. Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. Final greetings, Tychicus, Tychicus, Tychicus sorry, a beloved brother, faithful minister, and fellow servant in the Lord, will tell you all the news about me. I am sending him to you for this very purpose, that he may know your circumstances and comfort your hearts. With Onesimus, a faithful and beloved brother, who is one of you, they will make known to you all things which are happening here. Arist uh, uh, Aristarchus, Arist Aristarchus, Aristarchus, yeah, my fellow prisoner greets you with Mark, the cousin of Barnabas. You know what that reminds me of? Is there's a, a, the, the song, The Blessing. I think it's Carrie Job, right? I can sing it in Hebrew, but it's almost impossible for me to sing it in English. And so some of these scriptures, these words, the names, it's hard for me to say it in English because I'm used to it, you know, I, just, oh, I don't even know how to describe it, but yeah, so that's why sometimes I struggle on these names because I know I'm in Hebrew and, and sometimes they're a little bit different when they're translated to English, so bear with me. So, Aristoc yeah, anyway, my fellow prisoner greets you with Mark, the cousin of Barnabas, about whom you received instructions. If he comes to you, welcome him and Jesus, who is called Justice. I used to have a son named Justin. These are my only fellow workers for the kingdom of God who are of the circumcision. They have proved to be a comfort to me. Epaphras, Epaphras, I can't remember how that's pronounced. Epaphras, I believe it is, which is one of you, a bondservant of Christ, greets you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. For I bear him witness that he has a great zeal for you. And those who are in Laodicea and those in Her Herapolis, Luke, the beloved physician, and 
Demas greet you. Greet the brethren who are in Laodicea and Nymphos and the church that is in his house. Closing exhortations and blessings. Now when this epistle is read among you, see that it is read also in the church of the Laodiceans, and that you all likewise read the epistle from Laodicea, and say to Archippus, Take heed to the ministry which you have received in the Lord, that you may fulfill it. This salutation by my own hand, Paul, remember my chains. Grace be with you. Amen. He was still in prison when he wrote that. I think most of the new, I think most, pretty much most of the New Testament that he wrote, he was still in chains. Wow. All right. And close. Wait, don't close yet. Oh. I'm going to show you something pretty cool since I got you for another three minutes. I'm going to show you if I can get it to open back up. No, restart, restart. No, I don't need to recover. No, 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 no. Go ahead and close it. Now open it. Okay. There is a thing I have that shows, and it's, it's on a document, if I can get it to open, yeah, here it goes, that shows how Jesus is referenced in every book in the Bible. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Tabraka, Aaronic Blessing Lyrics. Yeah. Um. Oh, man, I had it open all this time. Um. Okay, well, I'm not going to keep you for that. I'll, I'll find it and open it. and That really makes me want to dip stuff. I swear that irritates me no end. Oh, there it is. Yay! <laughs> you thought I was going to let you go. All right. I'm going to have to sit up in front of it. <laughs> okay, so in Genesis, Jesus is the seed of the woman, the breath of life. In Exodus, he is the Passover lamb. In Leviticus, he is our high priest. In Numbers, he is the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. In Deuteronomy, he is the prophet like under Moses. In Joshua, he is the captain of our salvation. Salvation. In Judges, he is the judge and lawgiver. In Ruth, he is a kinsman redeemer. In First and Second Samuel, he is the trusted prophet. In Kings and Chronicles, he is our reigning king. In Ezra and Nehemiah, he is the rebuilder of the broken out walls of human life. In Esther, he is our Mordecai. In Job, he is the ever living redeeming ever living redeemer in psalms he is our shepherd in proverbs and ecclesiastes he is our wisdom in the song of solomon he is our loving bridegroom in isaiah he is the prince of peace in jeremiah he is the righteous branch in lamentations he is the weeping prophet in ezekiel he is the wonderful four-faced man and daniel he's the fourth man in life's fiery furnace in Hosea, he is the faithful husband, forever married to the backslider. In Joel, he is the baptizer with the Holy Ghost and fire. In Amos, he is the burden bearer. In Obadiah, he is mighty to save. In Jonah, he is the great foreign missionary. In Micah, he is the messenger of beautiful feet. In Nahum, he is the avenger of God's win in Havana and strength and shield. In Habakkuk, he is God's evangelist crying, revive thy works in the midst of the years. In Zephaniah, he is our savior. In Haggai, he is our restorer of God's lost heritage. In Zechariah, he is the fountain opened up in the house of David for sin. And in Malachi, he is the son of righteousness, rising with healing in his wings. In Matthew, he is the king of the Jews. Yeah. In Mark, he is the servant. In Luke, he is the son of man, feeling what you feel. In John, he is the son of God. In Acts, he is the savior of the world. 
In Romans, he is the righteousness of God. First Corinthians, he is the rock and the father of Israel. In Second Corinthians, he is the triumphant one giving victory. In Galatians, he is your liberty and sets you free. In Ephesians, he is the head of the church. In Philippians, he is your joy. In Colossians, he is your completeness. In First and Second Thessalonians, he is your hope. First Timothy, he is your faith. Second Timothy, he is your stability. In Titus, he is our blessed hope and the truth. In Philemon, 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 he is the benefactor. In Hebrews, he is your perfection. In James, he is the power behind your faith. In First Peter, he is our example. Second Peter, he is our purity. In First John, he is our life. In Second John, he's our pattern. Third John, he is our motivation. In Jude, he is our foundation of our faith. In Revelation, he is our coming king. He is the first and the last, beginning and the end, keeper of the creation and the creator of all. He's the architect of the universe, the manager of all time. He always was, he always is, and always will be. Unmoved, unchanged, undefeated, and never undone. He was bruised and brought healing. He was pierced and his pain. He was persecuted and brought freedom. He was dead and brought life. He is risen and brings power. He reigns and brings peace. The world cannot understand him. The armies cannot defeat him. The schools cannot explain him, and the leaders cannot ignore him. Herod couldn't kill him. Pharisees couldn't confuse him. People couldn't hold him, and Nero couldn't crush him. Hitler couldn't silence him. New Age can't replace him, and Oprah cannot explain him away. He is life, love, longevity, and more. He is goodness, kindness, gentleness, and God. He is holy and righteous, mighty, powerful, pure. His ways are right, his word eternal, his rules unchanging, and his mind is on me. He is my redeemer, he is my savior, he is my God, he is my peace, he is my joy, he is my comfort, he is my Lord, he rules my life. Amen. Shalom.